Hello, this is Alicia Saratani. As an editor of the LaRouche Pack website, I would like to offer a preview of Lyndon LaRouche's most recent report titled A Deadline in Destiny, which is now featured on the front page of this website. The fate of mankind has always been ultimately determined by the presence or lack of extraordinary leading figures such as Benjamin Franklin in his time, whose ability to muster a relevant personal force of creativity has made the difference between achievement or dismal failure of great enterprises. Without the triumph of creative forces over those forces of tradition, which doom thus failed nations and cultures, history would write off entire nations, even entire peoples, and ultimately even the human species as a failure. So, a great victory for mankind, under the circumstances of any truly grave crisis of civilization, is always expressed by a principled conception which is lodged primarily in even a single figure who rises in those circumstances to be the beacon of a concept of victory for the existential struggles of an historically critical time. In the final analysis, our creator does not take failure kindly. Today, long-standing features of that galaxy within which our solar system is situated now confront mankind with intimations of foreknowledge of the dangers which mankind has never before encountered during those several million years which the human species had existed thus far. Yet, at the same time, mankind as a living species is of a most unusual kind. Consequently, the ability of mankind to acquire the use of the new, more powerful principles generated by human creativity indicates a capacity unique to mankind, the ability to discover a universe which is larger, in a certain sense, than that which might have presumed to enclose that which we might have thought we knew well enough before. The potential explosion of access to such knowledge since the launching of NASA typifies this fact. This, however, depends on governments which permit and also support such discoveries of new principles and of their use. This consideration supplies a presently new direction in the increase of the human species' power not only to survive menacing new kinds of conditions, but to open up for our use grand dimensions of a truer universality than what we had not known before. Therefore, turn back to Einstein's and Max Planck's doubts respecting Laplace's allegedly demonic conception, or rather misconception, of time. There is a double fallacy in the notion of Laplace and virtually all others of the reductionists' religious perversions, especially those fools who babble endlessly about the legend of a finite universe and the silly second law of thermodynamics. Progress does not use up progress, rather, it feeds it. Not only is the second law of thermodynamics a lie, it is of the category of big lie. It is, as I have just written above, an expression of the oligarchical principle, as associated with the cult of the Olympian Zeus of Aeschylus's Prometheus trilogy, of the brutish empire's Bertrand Russell, and both the pro-genocidalist Prince Philip's and the Prince Bernard's Anglo-Dutch liberal sort of the new Venetian party, which came to be commonly known as the modern British Empire. That empire's new Venetian policy, as of that party's William of Orange, has been to keep the underclass's condition as brutishly barefoot, pregnant, and regularly winnowed, with the death of the underclasses as the price those classes must pay, as Russell put the point, so that the doomed underclass might procreate more freely. If we were to adduce the lawfulness from the pattern of development of living species, every species which does not develop into the building of a higher order of living species than had existed previously is foredoomed to probable extinction, as the species called mankind would be doomed into a state of readiness for the sort of chop once awarded to the legendary dinosaurs, unless it avoided the extinction implicit in the pro-genocidal policies of such as Thomas Malthus, Bertrand Russell, and the princes Philip and Bernard. Such is mankind's destiny, 
we have now reached a point of crisis at which the resistance to progress from the oligarchical interests must take their turn in that great sweeping away of the kind of development which ended the reign of the dinosaurs.